Hi, I'm Jasma. This video is going to be my only contribution to spooky season this year. We're making a black sesame pumpkin tangyuan, which is sort of like a sweet glutinous rice ball that has typically fillings inside of it, um, but there are also variations without. If you've never had tangyuan before or heard of it, it is a Chinese dessert that is traditionally eaten for the Lantern Festival, which is after the Chinese New Year. However, it is also a very common food, so it is eaten any time of the year. Now, tangyuan is served in a soup. If you think about the word tangyuan, tang means soup and yuan means circular or round, and it's sort of like these little balls that are in a soup. Now the soup is usually either the liquid that was used to cook the tang yuan, or it's some sort of an additional sweet syrupy mixture, which is what we're making today. Traditionally, these have a plain exterior, but today we are making it pumpkin, or in my case, kabucha squash, but that doesn't sound as catchy. So it's gonna have an orange exterior and a black interior because we're making a black sesame seed filling, and it just so makes it appropriately Halloween themed. So let's begin by making the filling. Add the roasted black sesame seeds to a food processor or blender, along with the roasted walnuts, shredded coconut, and a little bit of salt. Then simply pulse this until it turns into a powder, and you can see some of the oils have been released. Once you're done blending, transfer the mixture out into a bowl to which you're going to add the melted coconut oil and a little bit of honey. Then just mix until combined. The addition of the coconut oil and honey into the black sesame powdery mixture should cause it to bind together and form kind of like a crumbly dough. If it doesn't hold its shape when you squeeze it between your palms or if you just press down with your spatula, then that means it's too dry and you need to add a tiny bit of water to it to help it bind together. Now comes the slightly tedious part of the recipe and that is portioning out the filling. I'm portioning mine into five grams each. This recipe is going to make 22 15 gram tang yuan, but if you want, you can also adjust the ratios and make them larger or smaller if you'd like. The key is to really squeeze the filling so that it's tightly packed together. This not only makes it easier to work with and weigh out accurately, it's also going to ensure it doesn't fall apart when you roll it between your hands to smooth it out later on. Once you're done, cover with plastic wrap and pop this into the freezer for at least 15 minutes or until it is really solid. Now onto making the dough, which is very simple. The ingredients are just glutinous rice flour and pumpkin puree. I'm making my own puree using kabucha squash. You just boil it and then you mash it into a puree. You can, however, use pre-made pumpkin puree if that is easier for you. But the thing you need to note is that there are different moisture levels inside of different kinds of squash and purees if you were to buy it from the store. So you might need to tweak my recipe a little bit depending on how it's looking for you when you mix the dough together. I believe kabucha squash has a lower moisture content, but if you were to use fresh pumpkin to make your puree, for instance, you might need to add more glutinous rice flour for the dough to reach its right consistency. Add the glutinous rice flour to the pumpkin puree, and since we're not working with water, the glutinous rice flour is going to take a little longer to absorb the moisture from the pumpkin puree, so it might look a bit dry at first, but just keep kneading and then assess whether or not you need to add more glutinous rice flour or a little more water. The consistency you're looking for is the one of Play-Doh. It should be soft enough that when you roll it into a ball, it's not cracking, but if it is too sticky or it's too soft and it doesn't really hold its shape, you're gonna need to add a little more glutinous rice flour to make it a little thicker. To portion out the dough, I'm not going to measure it out as meticulously as the filling. Instead, I'm just gonna roll it out into a log and try to make that as even as you can. We're gonna cut it in half. And like I said before, this makes 22. So we're gonna portion it into 22 pieces. Now that we have two logs, we need to cut each log into 11 pieces, but that's a bit difficult to eyeball. So I'm just gonna cut off one piece from both ends and then cut the rest into 10 pieces each. So now we have 22 pieces of this dough and it should be about 10 grams each. You can weigh it out if you want to, but this does the trick. So now we can begin to assemble and wrap the filling using our dough. The filling should essentially be raw card. 
at this point and that's gonna make the wrapping a lot easier. If you are making a larger batch of this, what I recommend doing is keeping the rest of them in the freezer and only taking out a few pieces of the filling at a time so that everything stays really cold. Same goes for the dough. If you are making a larger batch, keep all of it covered in plastic wrap so that it doesn't become dried out. The wrapping process is very simple. The only important thing is that at the very end that you roll it between your hands enough that it's completely sealed so none of the filling breaks out of the dough when you're boiling it. Everything's assembled, so now we can cook these. I have a pot of boiling water ready on the stove. If you aren't cooking all of them right away, be sure to freeze any leftovers and cover it with plastic wrap because if you leave it at room temperature or in the fridge even, it's going to crack over time. They can last in the freezer for up to a month and whenever you wanna eat it, you just boil it as usual, but it might take a tiny bit longer to cook. To cook these, drop them into boiling water. Make sure you're using a large enough pot so that there's a lot of room in there and that the tongyun won't stick together while cooking. Once the pot comes to a rolling boil, pour in some cold water to drop the temperature of the water in the pot and this will cook the rice balls more gently to prevent tearing. When the water is back to a rolling boil and all the tongyun are floating, that means they are fully cooked. Normally this would be served using the water that was used to cook this, but what I'm doing today is I'm actually gonna cook separately some peach resin and goji berries and make a syrup mixture like that. Now peach resin is an interesting ingredient. It's sold rock hard and you can get it from any Chinese grocery store. So you need to soak it in water to rehydrate it for at least four hours until it becomes soft and then it's going to have the texture of almost like jelly. Now goji berries and peach resin are not only incredibly good for your skin and your overall health, you can do more research if you'd like into the science of it all, but I actually also really like the way they look. I think the colors go very well together, but it is optional. You can skip it entirely and just boil them and then serve them on its own. So add the peach resin to some cold water, and once it comes to a boil, add in the goji berries, a little bit of brown sugar, give everything a quick stir, and there you have the soup ready to go to serve with your cooked tangyuan. Be sure to serve and enjoy these while they're still warm and go grab the full written recipe on my blog if you want to try them yourselves. Thanks for watching.